Okay. Well, everyone, I'd like to introduce to you a longtime member of St. Barnabas, Tony Conyers. Way back. <laughs> way back. Way, way back. So uh, I'll let Tony say something about himself in a second here. But um, from the various first days of my arriving at St. Barnabas, uh, Tony engaged me uh, with a passion of his, which is how, for him, the scripture and the story of faith come alive in image, come alive in the curation of image to tell and cast that story. Some of you may know, a few weeks ago, uh, we used one of Tony's works. Um, he created a, a scroll, and, uh, and Sarah read from that scroll for the gospel reading. Um, it was a scroll that referred to other scrolls, and uh, Tony put that together for us, and he, he showed me another one that he's done. So uh, it's very present to me that, that Tony uh, would jump on something like this, the, the, the invitation to uh, visually express and engage Scripture, and we're so privileged that you get to do that and now talk to us a little bit about that. So, uh, Tony, anything you want to just tell about yourself before we jump right into your uh, piece here? Well, um, Nick, I have to say, you... you have a lot more insight to m me than maybe I do myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I really do uh, have a, um, a strong compulsion almost to uh, print and show people visual art and visual uh, things that can open more doors into our great story. Mm. And uh, that's one of the things that Jim Clark talked about 10 years ago when I returned to St. Barnabas after a 40-year absence. Mm. And um, uh, originally I <clears throat> went with my family to the Quonset Hut down, downtown Scottsdale. And a few of you probably were there as well. And then I was and I went out and lived my life for quite a while, and I came back here 10 years ago and heard a sermon by Jim and joined Taze, the uh, Bible study, and it's been a part of my life ever since. And That's fantastic. Yeah. This project came about, <clears throat> well, it was almost um, predestined. I, I saw a photo of a large group of children in front of the altar screen at Assumption Church in North Scottsdale. It's a Greek Orthodox. And I don't know if you've ever been in a Greek Orthodox church, but the whole front end is all icons and gold leaf. And it's just, first time you see it, it's mind-boggling. But anyway, this photo showed a whole group of children standing facing the center of the church holding their favorite icons. And they were... Oh, I'd say anywhere from six to 16 years old. And, I, and that picture just struck me. I thought, look what a powerful thing these icons are for all these children, because obviously they have them at home, and they mean a lot and say a lot. They speak to the children. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll make an icon necklace somehow, some mm. kind. And so I started designing and working on images. And about a month later, I got the email from America. The, the uh, 10 Stations Linton Art Program. And I thought, oh, well, OK. <laughs> so I embarked on, <clears throat> I have to say, this has been one of the most challenging projects I've ever attempted. It's just. Uh, it went through so many evolutions. I probably made the equivalent of three necklaces before the final result started showing up. I had to learn how to do um, copper foil work and get the copper foil. And I had to learn how to do the resin coating. I'd never done any of that before. And uh, So this was a project for you that began before the project began. Yes. Yes, it the just work of the Holy Spirit was sort of in you, and, and so that's part of what led you to engage more than just the one station that you could have picked, but you, that, that plethora of those photos with the children really was, for you, you wanted to sort of 
do all reach, of them. reach out of that call of, of you and, and say, say it is. So, so you've done this, and then you, you began to, uh, as you began to do this, did you know that you'd need to do a bunch of new research and think about new it, methods, or how did just, that come out? It, everything was an evolution. You know, one step, I got to a point, and I had to try different woods to try to figure out what to mount the images on before I coated them, and the certain woods would shatter and splinter when I was trying to cut them, so mm. I had to find the right real thin plywood and how to cut it, and, and then the copper, how to attach these beads out here, and the whole design just sort of finally came together. It was so, everything, it was so much painstaking work, but it didn't, it was just a different kind of work. It was fun. And uh, it's always fun to print these things and give them to people, whether it's as a uh, presentation or as a card or a, an image that I would hand out to somebody or some of our class, maybe. So let's, uh, I want to talk about some of the design elements you chose. Um, it, First, you've got the sort of these these beads here, but then they're in conversation. It seems with uh, a, maybe a theological choice. I'm jumping a little bit, but what? Tell us a little bit about these three that sort of form they're on the on the side. Maybe, you know, yeah, maybe a sort of a cross image coming off of the wood, or or it what? is it is definitely I, uh, I I've always appreciated the the French cross, the trefoil cross, I guess, where there's a a, a triple on each point. Okay. And these, uh, I thought of just doing only the icons, and then I thought that they kind of needed something to balance somehow. And so I, um, and I needed something to mount on the back to drill so I could string the beads all right. through. Sure. And so it all, it became, I didn't want to just have a piece of wood on the back. I figured why not extend it and have um, this uh, triple um, look out here, and right. it was hard to figure out how long to make it. <laughs> you know, each dimension was like, do I want it this long or this how long? How many cubits, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Cubits, yeah. mini yeah. cubits. Mini cubits, yeah, that was very technical. Uh, the whole copper, um, the whole copper theme, it just sort of came together. Okay. Um, I, I actually I've been making necklaces for over 40 years. That's how I started my business. But nothing like this. This was a whole different level. And I, here it starts with the first uh, the first station here, and it goes around to the tent where he he's condemned, and then he ends up finally being. Uh, taken to the his grave over here, mm -hmm. and uh, or to the tomb. Right. And and also trying to pick the color for the paint on this. This is wood here that sticks out. And um, so you painted those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, everything was a, a learning curve, you know. Okay. I, I wanted to make something that might last, and sure. so. Um, and so, then, so speaking of something that lasts, yeah, you're, you're getting ready to point at something I was going to point at to segue to something the, else. So. Ten of the stations in, in tiny miniature in the, reproduced right. in, in the center. So one of, one of the things that uh, I've always been struck by is, again, you're sort of uh, uh, in your art, you, you are in conversation with other artists, others who have engaged visually. And so these works um, are works that were new to this project for you, or works that you've ex engaged before. Tell us a little bit about uh, okay, these, uh, the images that you th use. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. The, the, I wanted to find some that, when I made them this small, uh, this is from a series of paintings by a Spanish, they're relatively recent, uh, by a Spanish painter, and I wanted some that, when I shrunk them down, they would still have some jewel-like uh, tones or uh, mm. colors that would stand out. And so I spent a lot of time online looking, and I finally found this whole set that, of paintings. The, they're big paintings that the guy did. And I thought, well, if I reduce them 
Um, they'll be pretty good, and they turned out to be just what I needed. And uh, I didn't think he'd be mad if I borrowed his images because I'm not selling them either. So I, I feel intellectual property is uh, another modern issue. There's so much on the internet that um, I don't know how they, how anybody keeps his, <laughs> right. <laughs> controls so you, his. So you, you found these images and, and mm -hmm. noticed that they were in a series. Um, and, and you were in particular looking for a quality that would, at this size, still, still have be able to. Vibrant yeah. colors, yeah. Yeah, which, which you'll have to, uh, to look at this. Uh, it'll be displayed throughout Lent in the chapel. Uh, because it shows all 10 stations, we have it over there in the chapel, um, uh, which is just uh, south of here on our campus. So um, if, if you want to continue engaging it, of course, it'll be here a little bit, and a few of you came up earlier. Um, so, I, let me see, I'm just wondering, uh, all right, so I think that's most of my questions. I, I, I wanted to just, you know, ask, I guess, one more sort of open-ended question for you, which is um, a little bit about, you know, your engagement um, uh, with this project is, what's, what's sort of the source of inspiration for you? you? You talked a little bit about that experience of seeing these children. Uh, you know, what, what kept you going hours upon hours doing research, trying new methods, keeping uh, so that you could be here and tell us all about this? What, what drives you? Hmm. Now you did it. <laughs> uh, well, I, li I like, I really enjoy making something that uh, gives other people inspiration or encouragement into our great story mm. and I have seen and f observed when I give people uh, one of my cards I print and they maybe they come back later and tell me that they really understand something a lot clearer or they enjoy it better than they did before and that that's what is sort of my my payoff or my goal it's it's a new kind of experience in my life it um and i have to say there there is a connection with a certain self-esteem a very special self-esteem mm. and to be honest that that i've never experienced before that comes with your art. It comes, it comes with, with the, the sharing. connection, the sharing. The yeah. sharing is the is the real key for me. That's powerful. Amen, brother. <laughs> well, that's the amen on our part. But but we have the opportunity to hear a, a few questions and uh, thoughts uh, from you all. Oh, so okay. Erica's got the mic, and if you would just uh, you don't have to stand up, but if you'd say your name uh, and you can ask your question or give your thought. Uh, and indicate by raising your hand. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, Eric. A little easier to use, Mike, but hold it up close, okay? Uh, my name's Joanne Berg. Swallow it, Joanne. <clears throat> Swallow it. My name's Joanne Berg. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Tony, I think this is is magnificent. It's it's Renaissance. It's sentimental. It's a rosary. It uh, the, the copper is just so warm and inviting and organic. I hate to use that word because everybody uses that word. But um, iconic. There you go. There's another word that's overused. But I just really think um, however your mind worked, this is very special. I think you did a great job. Well, um, Joanne, I'll sure take that to heart as a real, real compliment from a fellow artisan. Yeah. It speaks to me. It's lovely. And Thank it matches my hair if you ever want to loan it out. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. It's not for sale, Joanne. It's not for sale. Yeah. Who else?
I'm WIC Elder Ken Tony. I'm intrigued with how you came about envisioning the scale and, and the dimension by which you achieved the beautiful artwork here. And I guess also I'm intrigued when you said you had to paint the wood. And I'm looking at this picture. I, sorry, I haven't had a chance to get up to it closely. But I'm thinking, boy, could you have used little uh, rectangular lengths of mahogany to mount these little, look like silver balls onto and might make life a little easier for you but have a great project. And then uh, you said you were using plywood on the back side to hold the... Yeah, like a, a birch, real thin birch right. plywood. Did you ever give thought of using copper or brass? Well, it's, hard, it's harder to work with the metal to, to cut it and attach. See, these, each one of these I printed on a special paper that gives the best image on my inkjet printer, and then I would cut them out and trim them and actually glue them onto the wood and then put a coating over them and then put the resin, and which was a, like a week-long process um, to let, let them dry in between. And so um, the, the wood just seemed to be the way to go. There's so many other ways that, that it could have been done. That's great. Thank you, Wick. Who else? We have a hand just in the back. I can't quite see who it is. Is that Nancy? Hi, I'm Nancy. It's, uh, it's really lovely, and it, it, it's, it warms the heart. <laughs> um, how much does it weigh? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of heavy. Um, I never just curious. I, I never so put it looking. on the scale, but it could weigh a pound. Um, I, I've noticed each each one of these has its own fastening, you know, to to keep it up. So, uh, but I haven't held it, so <laughs> that'll be later, I guess. Sure. Yeah. My name's Liza. And Tony, this is just exquisite. Um, I've been admiring it and admired it Monday night in the uh, Centering Prayer Group, and everyone else was admiring it as well, so in the chapel. Uh, did you have a particular station that you spent more time with than another? Was there a particular station that spoke to you more than the others? Ah, well, I have to. I have to say that I have always <clears throat> had an aversion to crucifixes uh, because I don't like to think of Jesus in that way. I like to think of Jesus in terms of the empty cross, and He's ascended, and I. So I would say that that here the the crucifixion. I thought maybe I'd have trouble because, of course, I have to look at these a lot while I'm making this. But I had no, you know, it was a very, I, I didn't have any bad emotions or feelings about the, any of the uh, images. It just was very calming to, to construct it. So I... That, that's all I could say. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, part of what I'm taking away too in your comments is that is that you're inviting people to the great story. So for you to that's just maybe tell one image, you know, you're sort of saying, I kind of just need to tell more of what's going on here, you know? And, um, and so you do that beautifully. Oh, well, thank you. Any thank other you. questions? Any other things? So, oh, um, Jim? Tony, if you don't mind my saying so, um, I've seen many of your pieces and enjoyed them all. And I, 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 I probably should say this to you privately, but, but I know you as a deeply tender and intimate man and then a man with great passion for the story and how it changed your life. That's true. And I know that about you. And of all the pieces you've done to me, this 
just reflects you really well, and that's uh, very inspiring to me. Thank you for it. Oh, you're all welcome. You're welcome, Jim.